Good morning and welcome to the Regina Paul Show. Today I'm joined by the beautiful Elisa Thixon. She is a divorce recovery coach. Welcome, Elisa. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Regina. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So, Elisa, tell us your story. How did you become a divorce recovery coach? Well, how I became a divorce recovery coach is I'm I'm divorced myself. Um, and I was, I was, I was married to a, a narcissistic, narcissistic uh, man, and I really struggled. I struggled with, you know, being on my own, um, being a single mom, trying to make ends meet financially, and then trying not to be triggered by my ex throughout the court process. It was a really, really hard struggle. So. Um, I went through my own trials, had my own therapy, and um, I feel right now it's my calling to help single parents, um, especially single moms, just get through this really, really hard time. And I help them heal from I help them heal from their divorce and also from their partner as well if they were abusive. Okay, so how did you? How did you get out of that relationship? Well, how I got out of it was um, it, it wasn't planned, but what um, I was, we were kind of in a fight and I knew this fight was going to escalate to maybe something more maybe dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I just said, okay, you got to go. Got to go. That's that. it. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, he did, but he fought it afterwards, saying he had no place to go, etc. But I knew he did. He had mm -hmm. more. He had more options than I did. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you describe to our viewers what is a narcissist? How do they act? Well, a narcissist, they actually have uh, seven specific characteristics. Um, it's. Basically what it is, is it's a uh, personality slash mood disorder. So it stems from trauma that they've had in their childhood. And it's basically an inflated ego is what they have. Um, they're very emotionally manipulative. I can never say that manipulative. And what they do is they manipulate you to get what they want because it's always all about them. So, um, depending on depending on how narcissist or how their disorder is, I should say, it also it can stem with other mood disorders as well. So sometimes um, they can be schizophrenic, or they could have borderline personality disorder. Uh, they can be bipolar. So they're basically, they're up and down. So a lot of it, you're, you're walking on eggshells because you never know what's going to set them off. That, that was my case. So if you say no, when it's something that they want, they can either explode or they can just up and leave you. Who cares? Okay. Wow. That's, um, that sounds like a really tense way to live, you know, uh, yes. yeah. on eggshells. Oh. So, yes. um, <clears throat> uh, how, how do you help women then heal? Like what, like what, what do you do to help them in, in their situation after divorce or even if they're going through, like, through one? Well, there's, there's a few steps that, that I do. I, um, you know, I, I tap into the grieving process and and the steps of grieving. And I also, um, I, ex I explain to them what narcissism is. And we kind of touch base on, on what they've been going through. And I also help them kind of, I help them face their triggers that they're having right now. Because there can be a lot of triggers even during the court process. Okay. Um, a narcissist can be very vindictive. So if you ask for something and it goes against what they want, they mm -hmm. can backlash on you and spread rumors, etc. So sometimes even just seeing something from their lawyer 
can make that they can make my clients feel extremely nervous and anxious. So I give them relaxation techniques on how to cope through that anxiousness. And I also help build their self-esteem because what happens when you leave a narcissistic relationship, your self-esteem is at the bottom because that's what the narcissist wants. They they want you isolated. They they want you to have no self-esteem so that you're codependent on them and they're your entire world. So I also explain that as well. I, I have um, I have a few sessions with them on what codependence really is and how to fight against it because that can also become an addiction after you just become so codependent on people. So when you leave that relationship, you can um, also find other narcissistic relationships as well. It, it, ju it doesn't just stop sometimes with your ex-partner. Mm. That makes sense. Mm. Uh, looking so used to it that you're looking for the same thing to fill that gap that's gone now, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And also, mm -hmm. and some, also people, some people they can find that. I'm sorry, it's, <laughs> the background is echoing, so I stop. That's why. Uh, oh, okay. I can't hear sometimes. It. Oh, okay. I think it's just on my end. That's fine. Okay. Um, what can happen too is when you're used to a codependent relationship, like sometimes we've grown up with it, any sort of attention, we kind of view that as love because we don't know any other way. But when you have self-love, you can stand up against that codependency because you know you don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. So that, that piece I, I find is, is really important. Yeah, self-love. Um, most definitely. So when we, when we really take, start taking care of ourselves and showing ourselves some love, um, everyone else kind of can see that around us. There's this glow about us, right? When we just are mm -hmm. um, happy with ourselves, love ourselves, and so your worthiness kind of goes up, and that's kind of like what you then tend to attract more of. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, yeah. How, how, do you have any kind of uh, days where you take care of yourself? Do you have like um, a self care routine that you do now? Yes, I do. Yes, I, do. I, do. I do. Um, um every day every I would day say I would that, I that I practice self care because I I have I have a routine where I do positive affirmations in the morning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even when my stress begins, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I've learned how to meditate. And I have a relaxation meditation method that I use when I'm really, really stressed. And I teach that to my clients as well. And it's about going to a, a special relaxing place that you can just go to whenever you're stressed. Um, and I also keep a gratitude journal as well, which I find it just helps keep me in check. Uh -huh. And I also take one day a week where it's just, it's just for me. So if I want to catch up on shows I have recorded, or I take a bath, I do takeout, I'll see a friend, go out for coffee, well, whatever I want to do. I turn uh -huh. my social media off and it's, and it's one day. That sounds good. We all need that day when we have to unplug, right? Just for a little bit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, how, what advice would you give your, your younger self to maybe um, stop you from going into a narcissistic relationship? I wish I knew about the codependence factor when I was younger. And I wish, I wish I knew meditation and self love back when I, when I was younger, because the more you don't give in to a narcissist, the more you don't fall into that path. Uh, they don't even consider you. They consider really caring people, kind of as bait, I guess. 
and some sometimes too us caring people one of our flaws it's a strength but it's it's a flaw as well as we put others before us so a narcissist actually will look out for that and i i wish back then i knew those signs mm -hmm. what would be uh some of the red flags that women can um can look for if they've just met someone can you share that of course well, one of the red flags, <clears throat> one of the red flags is like sometimes they'll, um, they'll, they'll kind of say what their past is about, but they do it right away. Like they'll say, oh, my parents treated me like this. I was instant, like they'll say instantly, oh, I was highly abused, I was this, I was that. And they'll constant they'll constantly be talking about themselves. And when you try and add something or try and talk about yourself, you're cut off. Because they don't want to hear what you have to say. They only want to talk about them. And we all have a past, you know, we all have grown from it. We all have had some sort of childhood trauma. But the ones uh, the people who have moved on from it are more humble about it we don't want to talk about it right away like we really have to be trusting of someone to be able to share our story but where a narcissist they just go on and on and on and tell everybody about it, it it's almost like they're bragging about it it's almost like to say oh well look at me so if you ever see that look at me factor and they've had a really, really, really bad childhood, that's that's a factor right there. That's a red flag. So you don't want someone boasting about that. Right. Um, another thing to look for is kind of odd behaviors, you know. Um, and kind of what I mean by that is you know, right now, everything is in the online world. So when you're getting to know someone it's through texting or maybe through dating apps, and it can be really, it can really, it can be really hard to tell. But, but one red flag is they always are texting. Like every, like every hour, they're wanting to know what you're doing. And say you've met someone and you've only been talking to them for maybe a few days or so but they're like text bombing uh, that's mm. what i call it they're blowing they're constantly blowing up your phone and they're always wanting to know what you're doing that's a red flag that's that's not love because that other per like we have jobs right so that yeah. other person should be respecting your space right away right from the get-go and along with the text bombing, they also they also do love bombing. So they'll give you these almost like unrealistic compliments mm -hmm. where you're just going, wow, and your head is spinning and you find that you're just falling for that person dead fast right away. Um, and they kind of don't let you think about anything else. Um, they're just constantly showering you with compliments. That, that's a red flag. And, and that one I find is kind of the hardest to stay away from because we all love compl compliments, right? Mm -hmm. We all love them. They're really easy to fall for. But someone doesn't constantly compliment you every hour or every, every text or et cetera. For me, a compliment has to be sincere. You know, so if you see someone and you want to compliment them on how they look or, you know, um, you're saying something about your day, something you've accomplished in the job, then you acknowledge them and, and pay them a compliment by saying, you know, hey, great for you. That that was, you know, that was fantastic. You want to really be sincere. A narcissist on, online, they're not sincere. Uh-huh. So if you've mm. met someone and you're thinking that they are completely crazy about you and that's why they're love texting you or love bombing you, 
um, mm -hmm. you should really look out then what they're actually saying in those text messages to be able to tell That's the difference, right? Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks for sharing with us that. Uh, thanks for sharing with that with us, Elisa. <laughs> it's a little tough to us. Welcome. <laughs> I do that too, <laughs> all the oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> um, what keeps you motivated to keep going? What motivates me in the morning, um, especially, you know, I'll say maybe on the days where you're not feeling 100%, I'd have to say is my meditation and my affirmations. And just... Mm -hmm knowing that I can help one person that day, that is my huge motivation. Yeah, that's big. That's big. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see yourself like in the next five years uh, with your with your coaching um, or yourself? Well, with my coaching, I would I would love to have I would love to have more clients. I am I am working on writing a book uh, about about narcissism and and about my story. I'm really wanting to draw to draw attention and and bring more awareness of what you know on on what even the aftermath of narcissistic abuse is, because when you look online, this is one thing I've noticed in my research, and why I wanted why I want to do a book is everyone talks about you know kind, you know kind of how to stand up to narcissism you can find a lot of stuff online but they don't deal with the aftermath and they don't deal with the why like the why you have fallen into this and i didn't start my healing until i learned that okay so so that's really what i'm wanting in my business is is to draw that attention and, and to help more women Okay, well, I'm looking forward to that book. You'll have to share it with us once uh, it's complete and published. Yes, yes, of course. Of course I will. <laughs> uh, when was the last time you laughed so hard that your tummy hurt? I'd have, I'd have to say last night. Okay, so do you feel like mm. you live a, um, a fulfilling life right now? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, does your does your ex um, still affect you in some way or form? Yeah, there, are, there are sometimes little things that come up. Absolutely. Even though my son now is a is a teenager. Um, but what I've learned is I've learned how to effectively communicate with them. I I can't stop how he's going to react to something or how he's going to do something, but I can choose how I react back. So mm -hmm. I pay attention to those little triggers. And, and now as time has gone on, I pretty much know what his responses are going to be like. So I, it's not that I walk on eggshells. I just know that if I react in the same way he is, the same toxic way, it's not going to get anywhere. So I talk to him like a person. I effectively state my concerns and I have a conversation with him. I don't let him, I don't let him walk all over me. You know, I stand my ground. I make sure to, to put that boundary in place where before I didn't. And that's another thing I teach too, is how to put boundaries in place so that you and your children aren't walked over. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference now. Yeah, oh, that's so important. Effective communication, healthy boundaries. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you want your final words to be? I guess my final words to be, that's a good question is that <clears throat> there is hope at the end of the tunnel. Um, there, once you heal from narcissism, you become 
a totally different person. Once you know your your inner strengths and your inner beauty, there's there's no limits. Yeah. Mm. That's true. Uh, what can you not live without? I would have to say I can't live without my my inner strength and not know my inner abilities. Okay, so that's always a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's <clears throat> part of me. Um, mm -hmm. That's definitely what I find find too. That um, it's a continuous, continuous, um, continuous growth. Like we have to keep working on on our uh, on ourselves to be better so we can we can show up better right we have to fill up our own cup to be able to fill someone else's cup i just love that saying that's so right. much <laughs> yeah no that's true no, absolutely yeah. yeah and it's crazy how many women actually have to learn that we have we most definitely um put others way before us that's i don't know if this is mm -hmm. just a mother thing like if it's just once a woman becomes a mom that's what it is or if it's also um if, if it's if it's just most women like that i'm not sure that's a good point but but you are right i, I wonder if maybe we're you no know, i wonder if maybe because it's been instilled in us even like from earlier centuries like say the early 1900s is the women the women are nurturers so right. family always comes first mm -hmm. where i i'm even thinking about cavemen ages where you know the men would go out the men would go out and hunt and provide and you know they're it's just instilled in them to be strong so that they can provide for their family but women have to do it emotionally they have to emotionally be there for their family and, and, and care for them. So I think even to this day, we just always seem to put that first before before ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like how I, you I said that. Maybe that's, yeah, I wonder yeah. if maybe that's why. Yeah, because then we would they would go out hunting, we would go in and gather and take care of the, the kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been instilled in us to put everyone else first, so it makes it kind of tough to uh, to learn to say no and to put ourselves first and to really learn to love ourselves. Right, that we are more than just uh, nurturers. We are that's our right. Own person, we do have um, interests, and uh, mm -hmm. we can make an impact. Yes. Yes. yes absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And now we need to have these values more than ever because of how society is. Like a lot of families can't live on just one income. And there's a lot more single parents, especially now after, uh, now with COVID, you know, the divorce rate is higher. So we have to know our self-worth because we have to go out there now and financially provide and, and take it, take care of everything as a woman. So, we have to learn to evolve around that. And learn how to say, okay, no, I have to be in here somewhere. Yes, yes. I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, yeah, so the war seems to be going through the roof right now. People are really finding out what they like and what they don't like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being stuck with, yes. uh, with their families at home. They don't have that... Um, they don't have that job that they go to where they kind of forget about the problems and the things that they don't like at home, right? It just mm -hmm. makes you kind of see how many people are actually not not being true to themselves. I mean, that they, they just now really saw how unhappy they are and have to really find, um, are really taking that next step to find their own true happiness and heal obviously it's, it is a healing process after any divorce um mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's absolutely um skyrocketing right now yes yes it is mm -hmm. absolutely oh. and if you 
don't have effective communication too within your marriage if that was never there yeah how do you survive covid and being home with them all day and i think that's what's happening as well yeah, yeah mm. for sure. um how has your journey affected your family i know deep down and, and this is typical for for divorce or for children that have that are part of a divorce i know he he wishes that his parents uh were together uh, not maybe now but i know he went through a period with that um and i i helped him with that i you know i explained we're just very you know we're just very different we were better off as friends etc um i offer counseling to him it, it turned out that he didn't need it i was able to guide him through that but i actually think now he realizes what an unhealthy relationship is mm. and i've taught him that when you when you get married you want that to be it you want to make sure that you're in love with the right with the right person um right. my son now you know he knows boundaries he knows he knows what not to do he has empathy skills and i i think i think if i had stayed it would have been a lot harder on him i uh -huh. i think he would have had it i think he would have had a lot more trauma in his life than as opposed to just the divorce I think I think he's had a happier childhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, who has been your biggest, uh, your greatest inspiration? The greatest inspiration. That's a good question because there's a there's a few sources you know that I've had for for inspiration. I guess my greatest my greatest inspiration what what inspires me is um I think my spirituality excuse me <laughs> oh I'm so sorry <laughs> bless me no bless you um when I started tapping into my spirituality and and learning into spiritual awakenings and and being able to to meditate on my own without having it be guided and to to guide myself through my own healing process that's that's been my biggest inspiration because i've learned more about myself through my spiritual awakenings yeah. and through tapping into spirituality i i've learned more about you know inner growth and um mm -hmm. inner change and I yeah that would that would have to be my my biggest inspiration. Yeah. I love meditating. It just it, I find like with uh meditation it just builds this um this like invisible uh shield around me and that no matter what happens throughout the day I can just deal with it being calm, cool and collected. <laughs> so I can just Absolutely. see where the person is coming from like where their energy is at they know where mine is it is centered it is protected and it just it's crazy how that just kind of like happens once you start getting into it and continue with it right it just doesn't happen overnight that's right yeah. and, and when it comes to healing to healing traumas certain meditations um it's called uh you know it's called you have different chakras but there's a way to find out what chakras are, are are blocked and where it affects us in different parts of the body. So, one of my meditations, you know, when I'm deeply stressed or I'm struggling with an issue, is, is to unblock that. And I do that through body scans and just through just being able to sit with myself, relax. It and when you, uh, I'm. 
trying to think how to word it. Like there's a way that you can kind of tap into a little bit into your subconscious to bring out those emotions. And it, it's really good to know when you can't, when you can't pinpoint your emotions, you can meditate to help bring those out. Okay. That's neat. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that. oh. Do you have like mm -hmm. a, a favorite quote that you follow? I have so many of them. Um, I actually have it, I think, right here. It's actually on my journal. Ask for what you want and be prepared to get it. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> Me too, and it's my favorite color too. It's pink. See? Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, I saw it at a bookstore and I'm like, that is mine. I don't care yeah. the cost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of the things I say to my kids is don't ask, ask a question you don't really want an answer to. So, <laughs> you know. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. So I know this is kind of twofold in a way. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should almost say oh, with reason <laughs> when it comes to kids. Within yeah. reason. Yeah, within reason, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to write a book about your journey, I know you said you're going to be writing a book, right? What would you mm -hmm. name it? I've been working on a few titles. That's actually, that's actually a really, really good question. I, I'm not sure if I would name it as myself and, um, I was thinking of saying like my divorce recovery, learning from your after, learning from the aftermath. I thought of, I have a few titles. I, I'm I'm open. I'm open to ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'll have to finish. <laughs> uh, I like that. <laughs> Um, do you have a funny story that you would like to share with the audience? A funny story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example? Of anything that has really happened, like, um, oh, maybe uh, what made you, you made you laugh yesterday so hard? Are you able to share that? Uh, yes, yes. It's, <laughs> I was, um, I was speaking with my son who is who's very smart and it wasn't my night with him. So he was making himself some he was making himself something to eat. And I always say, I always ask, and he knows this, Oh, what are you having? And his, his response always is food, you know. But he, <laughs> he'll he'll turn it into a game where like I'll say, What kind of food? And the answers that he comes up with, I was just, yeah, I was laughing so hard, my gut hurt. And even he was laughing because I'm trying not to like play into, trying not to play into the game so that he'll tell me. And finally I was like, okay, you're just gonna tell me, you know I need to know. And he starts laughing and, and says, well, I know you need to know, why do you think I'm doing this? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, he does yeah exactly it's a uh, it's an inner joke he, he ends up telling me in the end but uh it's just something we've always done or um yeah yeah it's funny uh do you have a superpower elisa I'd have to say my my superpower. Hmm. 
I think my superpower has always been um, learning how to read people and learning about people's behaviors. I, I almost, I almost have a sense a little bit of what, not exactly what's going to happen, but I have a sense that something bad is maybe going to happen in certain situations. It's, it's hard to explain. Um, but I guess being able to tap into my own gut responses and my yeah. ability to read people, I can kind of just, for, I can foresee things a little bit. Not in a psychic way, of course. Mm -hmm. So you, um, it's almost like um, you're following your intuition. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. That's always important because a lot of people don't do that. They kind of like push it down oh. and then they end up in trouble and then they're like oh well maybe i should have you know followed it or maybe they didn't have that realization that they uh they were getting a signal and they weren't listening to it right right right, right. Yeah. exactly how do you think someone can actually tap into that uh to be more intuitive follow, follow their, their intuition a little bit more to help them um through divorce uh you know, dealing with their exes or just um, heal, start that healing journey? Uh, I would have to say is how they, how you do it really is learning about yourself and doing the self-love process. That's, that's how you do it. And maybe kind of looking at stuff that have, that have happened to you in the past. Um, I guess how I do it is if I find a situation is, is about to arise, I kind of look at how I felt in the past with how I feel right now. I don't know if that makes sense. So, for example, if I've ever met someone new and I just really don't have a bad or I don't have a good feeling about that person, I go with it because mm -hmm. what I, I kind of know when I've ignored it in the past, it hasn't ended right. And I know today I don't want that for myself. So learning, yeah, learning self-love and to really, really trust your gut and how to trust it, it is, is key. Right. right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I don't really have any more questions for you, Elisa. So I wanted to ask you one more, well, two more questions. Okay. The first one is, do you have a gift for the audience today that you would like to share with them? Uh, yes, actually. If you, you know, if you find that you're struggling with, uh, with narcissistic abuse, uh, even if you're just recently separated, but you find that you're struggling, I am offering a free month of coaching wow, to guide you towards that. Yeah, yeah, a month. And that okay. would include that would include three sessions. And just to kind of touch base with who you are and know that you have someone to talk to, I feel is very important in, in the process. Mm hmm support system. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely needed when someone's going through that. So how many, mm -hmm. uh, how many people are you offering this to? I am offering this to six people. Wow. So here you guys heard it first, six people. So <laughs> come on, jump on. <laughs> if you are struggling <laughs> with uh, going through your divorce or maybe been divorced and are still experiencing trauma, uh, reach out to Elisa because she can help you with that. Um, after this video, Elisa, if you don't mind just putting a link down where they can get in contact with you and your offer. Uh, that would be great <clears throat> so they know what it is if they just uh, want to replay a little bit later okay great and then i have one last question for you what would you do in a zombie apocalypse goodness <laughs> oh no, my goodness it's hard really to to they sure what I would do, but I, I know I would use my inner intuition because what I've heard about the zombie accomplice is you kind of have to have a bit of 
a bit of smarts. Like you can't, you can't like be trusting, so trusting of, of someone because they could end up being like some sort of zombie that kills you. <laughs> do I, <laughs> do I have it right? <laughs> Or you can't be like, is say you're out of food or whatever, and and you see someone who has food, but you know they don't really look like the right type of zombie. I don't know. <laughs> like you just get okay, they have food, but what are they going to do to me? You know, I guess yeah, using your instincts for survival. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nice. That's probably how I get through it. <laughs> so I'm not athletic. I don't know, if, and I don't think I could shoot someone unless I have to. I don't know that. Yeah, that's all I can come up with. Okay, <laughs> that's, <funny. laughs> that's a good question. That threw me off. <laughs> yeah, well, you should hear everyone's answers. It's actually quite funny. I love ask, asking that question, right? So uh, right. I'm going through a pandemic right now, but can you imagine if there was a zombie apocalypse happening right now, right? Oh. <laughs> my if first like, instinct would be to hide. Yeah. <laughs> Gather the like, food, hide in my closet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make sure your pantry is full. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, great. That's great. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, it has been a pleasure talking to you, Elisa. Um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, everyone, once again, this is Elisa Thixon. She is a divorce recovery coach. So if you're going through a divorce or you already had a divorce and are still experiencing trauma, go ahead and reach out to her because she's offering only to six women a month free coaching to help you start your healing journey. All right. Have a fabulous Sunday. Thanks again, Elisa. And I will oh, see you guys welcome. later. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye.